Good morning. I'm Martin Dichgans, a vascular neurologist attending the second European Stroke Conference in Barcelona. Um, I am very privileged to have uh, the principal investigator of the PET trial, um, a trial that tested a platelet transfusion in patients with ICH, Ivo Ross, together with his uh, study partners um, and collaborators, Rustam Al Shahi Salman from the UK, Edinburgh, uh, Charlotte uh, Cordonnier from Lille, yep. and Iram Baharoglu, also from um, Amsterdam, the Netherlands. My first question to you, Ivo, would be why would you conduct a trial giving platelet transfusion to patients with ICH? Yeah. Uh, well, the first idea came to me um, when I was um, uh, at the neurosurgery department and I saw over there uh, patients being admitted with an intracranial hemorrhage uh, who received immediately uh, platelet transfusions. And I said to myself, well, that's weird uh, because we in neurology don't do that. So it seems, it seems strange that you have one hospital, one academic hospital in Amsterdam, uh, two departments who have different protocols uh, when they admit patients with an intracranial hemorrhage who are on antiplatelet therapy. So that was the first moment I thought, said to myself, well, we need a trial to be done. And I went looking to the guidelines, uh, whether there was some information on it, what we should do. And, uh, actually, they said there, there, isn't, uh, there, there weren't any uh, trials done, and they all said, well, we can't re recommend it. So I said to myself, well, that's, that's a good idea to do a trial. There, there is doubt whether it's useful. And when there's doubt, you need uh, a randomized controlled trial to give the answer. So that's, that's, that started all with that. Well, that's great. What type of patients did you include into the trial? Well, um, we needed patients uh, with, uh, who, who weren't in a very bad condition. You want to include patients uh, who are on anti beta therapy for at least one week. Um, and you need patients who are in a condition that they can benefit from treatment. The whole idea is that when you give platelet transfusion, you can prevent hematoma growth. Uh, so what you actually need are patients with a smaller hemorrhage. Um, and at first we decided to, um, to define that uh, on CT scan, to, to, uh, to actually define the volume <coughs> of the hemorrhage uh, on admission. Um, but that seems tr uh, troublesome for some centers and we decided to shift um, after inclusion of only five patients, I think, uh, to just the, the Glasgow coma scale because we saw that when patients are coming in with a larger hematoma, they have a coma score of below eight and we decided to, to exclude those patients, so only include patients between a coma score of eight and 15 maximum coma score. Ah, yes, and what were the, the, the primary outcome measures of that trial um, or for, for people not so much in the scene? So how do you measure your, or did you measure your success, treatment success? Yeah, well, our primary outcome is the uh, modified ranking scale score at three months. Um, and then we decided also to add uh, secondary outcomes, like for instance, uh, hematoma growth uh, at 24 hours. But the primary endpoint is the, is the clinical endpoint. Uh, th that, that's all very exciting. Uh, I, I see that you, you are not alone. No. You already mentioned that uh, this was really a team effort uh, yeah, and uh, together with uh, investigators not only from the Netherlands but also from from UK and from France. So yeah. a real European uh, team effort. Yeah. Um, how, how did this emerge? Did this happen from all from the beginning or uh, did you uh, managed to uh, get additional partners on board while the study was going? No, good question. Now we started in the Netherlands and we had done some calculations on how many patients there were in the Netherlands who are actually on uh, uh, anti beta therapy who could be included and we had initially calculated to end uh, the trial within four years but then after two years um, we saw that we, we, we weren't halfway. Um, we also had a lot of trouble setting up the trial with all kinds of guidelines you need to do, you need to, to have good clinical practice, and it took, uh, took time, uh, ethics committees, things like that. So after two years, we were we weren't halfway. Uh, we were only at one third of the trial, or even less. Um, and then uh, Rustam came uh, into sight, uh, and uh, because I needed more centers, and there weren't any more centers in the Netherlands, and um, and we talked together, and we said, well, maybe we can expand to Scotland. And um, Rustam applied for funding, and he did get the funding. And so Patch UK was formed with uh, several centers uh, in Scotland. And then after some time, Charlotte came mm -hmm. and said, well, that's a nice trial. I like it. And we needed additional centers. We needed additional uh, patients because the trial was, was way beyond four years. We were at five years, I think, already. And then uh, Charlotte joined us and gave some boost 
and included uh, more patients. So that's, that's the reason why we now finished. So people will be interested, of course, to hear now about the results of the trial. And uh, would you be willing to share them with us in advance? Um, maybe, Iram, maybe you could uh, speak about the primary findings of this study and the most exciting results? Yes. From your perspective? Yes, so uh, we, uh, the, the primary hypo hypothesis was that plated transfusion would improve patient outcome at three months on the modified Rankine scale score. And um, we thought that it, that would be due to the hematoma growing less in the, in the patients that received platelet transfusion. And uh, so we included 190 patients that we needed and um, closed uh, the database and unblinded the data and um, checked the results. And we actually found something that we um, totally did not expect. So um, patients that received platelet transfusion were actually worse off at three months compared to the patients that received standard care. Do you consider this to be entirely unsuspected? Well, if you um, go back now looking in the literature, I think there may be some indications that plat platelet transfusion could be harmful or that it, could not, that it doesn't work. Um, but it was, we didn't think that we would find it, otherwise we probably wouldn't have done the trial if we already knew, of course. But uh, yeah, I think we were surprised. And were there any major complications? Um, so we checked uh, for the serious adverse events and we actually thought that we would find more thrombolic events or more um, transfusion reactions. Uh, those were slightly higher in the plate of transfusion group, but not that much. We actually saw more complications of the intracerebral hemorrhage itself, so brain edema, hematoma, growth, uh, leading to severe adverse events. They were not significant in the intention to treat analysis, but they were more often seen in the platelet transfusion group. And do you have any explanation for why it didn't work? Yes, I think that's difficult because it's all conjecture. We didn't test it in the trial. Um, so um, I will talk a little bit about um, maybe thromboembolism in the, in, the, in the brain, so um, maybe there, there is a, a critical perfusion around the hemorrhage and then the platelet transfusion could uh, result in thromboembolism in, the, in those vessels supplying um, uh, blood to uh, around the um, hematoma and that's the reason that platelet transfusion uh, is worse or there's an inflammatory response maybe uh, caused by platelets, but yeah, I can conjecture but um, we didn't test it, so we don't know. Thank you very much. I would also have a question to uh, Dr. Um, Cordonnier. Uh, are there any particular patients, or were there any particular patient subgroups in this trial that, in your view, benefited from the treatment or might have benefited from the treatment in subgroup analysis and that might, in future studies and trials, um, be um, of interest to study in more detail? Mm -hmm. We had a look at the, at the subgroups, especially the types of antiplatelet treatment and also uh, the volume of ICH at baseline, but we couldn't identify any, any uh, signal in any of the subgroups that we analyzed, uh, um, suggesting that there could be uh, one type of patients that could uh, respond in a different way. We, we didn't identify that. Um, of course, the, the, the subgroups were small because uh, of a sample, the overall sample size. Uh, the hypothesis of the different uh, response uh, according to the types of antiplatelet was interesting. Um, and we would have liked to be able to uh, uh, test further the platelet uh, response and the platelet signals from a biological point of, way, a point of view, but we couldn't do that in, in the whole uh, sample size. So do you think that um Platelet transfusion ter therapy is off the table after this trial? Yes, I think so. Okay, thank you. That, that's a very clear answer um, for, 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 for us and I think a very important message also you conferred. Did you communicate, and probably that is a question uh, to Dr. al Shahi Salman from, from Edinburgh, did you communicate your results uh, to patients or will you be communicating your results to your patients? So I think that's a really important thing to do in trials uh, because without the patients we wouldn't have trials. Uh, yes, we are planning to do that. It will need to be done separately by the individual countries in the appropriate language for the patients and done sensitively as well because many of these patients have died um, or are disabled after intracerebral hemorrhage, which is a, the most common outcome for the disease. 
and for the scientific community. Are we going to read about the results of this exciting trial, the PET trial in the future? So it's a great credit to uh, the trial team in Amsterdam and all the collaborators, uh, as well as the Lancet um, and its peer review mechanisms that we've been able to uh, have the, uh, the trial accepted by the Lancet fast track and published simultaneously with this afternoon's uh, presentation in, in record time, uh, which uh, meant that many of us were uh, writing the paper on our holidays or analyzing uh, late into the evening, but that's the dedication that you need to do randomized controlled trials. Well, thank you very much. This has been a, a very important trial. Thanks uh, for communicating the results up front. Thank you in particular to Ivo Ross, the uh, PI of the study. Uh, it's been a, obviously a team effort uh, by a, a group of European investigators. And thank you for presenting your results at ASO conference in Barcelona. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.